What's up, y'all? It's Brandon from IC Gaming, and today we're back with my Let's Build series in Space Engineers. This is going to be episode 6. We're finishing up our atmospheric miner, and let's get right to it. Just hop back into our character and head on outside. So, uh, I've already actually... <laughs> I already actually set this thing up with the scripts, but I will show you guys how to do it in just a moment. So, uh, just kind of want to give you guys an idea of what the finished product is going to look like. So we busy ship refueler over here, um, kind of on, uh, kind of where we would want to see it if we're just about to climb into the cockpit. Make sure that this thing is all nice and charged up for us. Uh, over here we have Excav OS's uh, cargo ore display. That makes it that makes a very nice display output that says, "Hey, this is what's inside of me." Um, you can, of course, change this to something else if you wish. Those, by the way, are the two scripts we're going to be putting on here. Izzy's Ship Refueler and Excav OS. So, let's hop in. Other things I did. I went ahead and set up the cockpit to have our nice little black and yellow theme. And with, uh, mostly Excav OS screens. I did put some of the default stuff in, just, just to kind of fill it in. Uh, I do like the artificial horizon. That feels like a very, uh, sh that feels like a very aircraft thing to have. Um, the rest of the stuff, I mostly put it where it looks the best. Um, I, I understand that having all your stuff, or having your, uh, your cargo right there doesn't look that great. It's such a small screen, but... <laughs> It's it's about as that's about as good as it's gonna get, I believe. Let me quickly check on that. Uh, grab our top right screen, and no, we do not have the option that I was thinking we did. However, I said this is the main cockpit. Okay, so here's the uh, here's here's kind of what's uh, going on with this. To add a script to a ship, so you go to it. So let's go to Izzy Ship Refueler and click Edit. Okay, then we're going to go to Browse Scripts. Look, the scripts I've already downloaded. Uh, I showed you guys in the last video how to download a script in case you missed it. Let's go to this. Uh, you click on this link and you search. I'm just going to search for Izzy because he's got a lot of really, uh, a <laughs> lot of really good stuff in here. Um, if you're ever in doubt about what kind of about what scripts to look for? Izzy has a lot of really good ones. Um, let's see, Izzy simple doors, light control script. Um, I, I already have the ship refueler uh, downloaded, but I think I'm actually going to grab the. You know what? The cargo bars looks interesting. The cargo bars look interesting. I'm gonna grab that. Okay, so I clicked it, and it and it is now downloaded. So if I shift tab out of this and scroll through here, you might notice that it's not here yet, and it won't be until you hit this. This will reload all the blueprints or scripts that you downloaded and refresh this list, which is the important part of it. Uh, I was looking into fancy flight info for this. Uh, it ended up being a little finicky, and the documentation is lacking. So, I decided to go with two much easier scripts to implement. So, uh, as you can see, we have Izzy's cargo bars right here. And we could then load it into our, um, we could then load it into the editor, as I'm about to do with Izzy Ship Refueler. So let's go ahead and copy this to editor. And this is now exactly the way Izzy wrote it. So, let's go ahead and scroll on down to the only thing I'm actually going to be changing in here, which is going to be the the timer trigger on events section. And this is because I want to use it to trigger a timer block to, to activate when I take off and when I dock. If you remember the last episode when I did this with timer blocks, you might notice that this is going to be very easy. So let's go ahead and set up our events. He's very nice and tells you exactly how to do it. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. Boop. And set up our timers. Uh, our timer blocks are named, the ones that I want to use, uh, timer block 
docking, I believe that would be landing. And timer, block, uh, takeoff. So let's go ahead and check code. Accomplished and successful. Okay. Hit okay. Uh, the timer blocks I did edit as well, so I'll show you what I did. Uh, set up actions. Uh, what it did is I took off anything having to do with the battery. That's what the script will do. And the connector. I want. I don't want to lock the connector because I want because the script will trigger when the connector is locked, and the timer block will be triggered by the script. So everything in here will happen as soon as I lock the connector. So what I want to do is turn off my thrusters, gyroscopes, ejector system, spotlights, and running lights. Make sure all those are off. Next, I want to set up, or what I should say is I did set up my takeoff timer block, set up actions, and you can see that all I have is my thrusters, gyroscopes, and running lights. Um, I didn't want to add anything else, kind of wanted to leave that up to manual control, but it is there if you want it. Uh, I did also reset up my landing gears timer block that is now working again. Uh, however, the script does not trigger off of that as far as I'm aware, so I'm not worrying about that too much. Okay. Now, to output the display, to output the information from the script, or from any of his scripts, to an LCD, let's take this port one, uh, this is what it was originally named. And if we check custom data and sort of get rid of that, this is what it originally looked like. So, custom data, nothing nothing in the title. So to you to put data from one of Izzy's scripts into any display, all you gotta do is go to the name, put an exclamation point, then the abbreviation of the script that you want to use. In this case it's Izzy's ship refueler or ISR. Hit a dash and then the exact display you want which is usually going to be main. So now that we have main out, we can check the custom data. It's already populated everything here, so we don't need to touch that. It's already changed the actual name of it to Izzy LCD to indicate that an Izzy script is using it. And the data is here and updating. So that's how you get Izzy ship, Izzy's, uh, Izzy scripts to work, and here is the Here's the effect. So, I'm going to come over to this landing pad over here, and I actually did change out my, uh, I changed out my my uh, hotbar a little bit to make it a lot harder for me to accidentally hit the connector or something like that by accident. So, we are now ready to dock. We go to our second hotbar, connect everything shuts off. All we did is connect. It's like magic. Uh, next, we want to take off, so all I'm going to do is hit 1 to disconnect. Everything turns on, courtesy of Izzy script. Nice. Uh, quickly going over the other hotbar changes I made, our descent thrusters are on 5. I took out our spotlight. Well, I actually took out our running light control. I, they should always be on if we're running this. I'll probably add to the second hot bar for a little utility later. And on number nine, I added a down camera. Uh, super useful when trying to dock in first person only. Uh, and sometimes even in third person, just depends on the situation. You can hit F to exit the camera, by the way. So, number on our second one, this is to deploy our landing gears, which will do exactly what we wanted them to do last time. So let's actually go ahead and land on those the correct way without crashing. Do, 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 do. And I believe we're locked. Yep, we're locked. Cool. So now that we're uh, so now that we're landed, uh, let me let's talk about the other script I put on here, XCAV OS. You uh, you put this on here the exact same way you put Izzy Shipper Fueler on there. However. If we go to edit, you'll notice that the documentation is all of like six lines. And that's because the documentation is under here. Um, and this tells you exactly how to use it. Or 
mostly how to use it, use it, I should say. So here are the options. You can do cargo or weight or utility. Uh, enable immersion is great if all of your screens look like this, but if it's not, uh, but if uh, your screens don't look like that, then it's not that. Uh, it, it looks kind of odd to have some of your screens booting up. Um, the documentation is actually right here. So, if you scroll down, you can actually see exactly how to use this script. Um, like, right here. It says what you need to change in the Xcab OS. So, let's actually copy that to the editor. Um, check code. Hit OK. Um, so, what we're going to need to change in the... Uh, custom data for the programmable block is the group name for our lifting thrusters and the group name for our stopping thrusters. Uh, that will enable uh, that will enable the script to tell us how much of our lift thrust we're using and how long it's going to take us to stop, which are great when you sometimes crash into things. <laughs> just just to have that information available. <laughs> um, cargo ore, however, is kind of my favorite one. So, all you need to do to add this output, which is uh, this one on the side over here, to any screen, is literally just go into your control panel, grab a panel, and then type this in there. Excav OS Surface Zero Cargo Ore. And that will tell you exactly how much cargo you have in there. By the way, I changed the background to black with this, with these sliders down here, and the text to yellow with these sliders up here, just to better match the uh, sort of theme of the miner, which is, well, it's dark gray and yellow, but you can't really <laughs> do a very good dark gray here. Um, so I also did the same thing on the starboard one, and in the fighter cockpit, what I did is weight, cargo, or utility on surfaces 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the fighter cockpit was not what this script was designed for, so heading back into the cockpit, uh, you can see that the uh, last screen and also the uh, cargo or screen are not actually well aligned. However, um, they do provide all the, uh, all the data you need, so I'm kind of wondering why it's... By the way, if, if you're the guy who made Xcav OS, I'm not sure why it's showing a lift thrust of 32% right now when I'm docked on the ground. That's kind of... Oh, getting a little bit of clang. That's not... And land correctly. Okay. Um, I don't know why I'm using lifting thrust when I'm on the ground. That doesn't seem correct. Anyway. Um... So, by the way, changing things in the fighter cockpit, uh, you go to the LCD panels. Uh, the bottom center screen is this one down here, and the numpad is this one over on the side. Uh, I wanted to change the bottom center screen to the symbol because I think it, I think it's kind of cool, and the numpad to just the velocity to have something there, um, since it's kind of hard to see, and I didn't want to put anything really important there. Um. I think that's about yeah that's actually uh, that's actually all I did as far as scripting goes and it's honestly not that hard like it took me a while to actually get into scripting the first the first ship I put a script on is uh, the Oweta class miner over here and the script that I put on it is is a shipper fueler set up exactly like the uh, miner that we just made so uh, just just to show you guys what I mean. Land over here somewhere. Come on. There we go. Uh, hit nine and everything shuts off. Um, so yeah, this is the final version of the miner that we've spent the last <laughs> week, maybe two weeks building. Um, 
and I believe at this point it includes every single system you could possibly want for a miner, with the singular exception um, of a projector for repairs. Uh, that is something that I have thought about, not really looked into, not really played around with or messed with, so maybe next episode if I can find a place to put it. Otherwise, this is the miner that's going to be on the workshop available to you guys. So before we put on the workshop, we need to do something very, very, very important. And that is a grid name. Uh, I came up with a name for this miner a little bit ago. If I go to the control F10. Uh, this is going to be the Verno class miner. Uh, quick mention about naming things. Um, you can name things whatever you want, but keep in mind that no one's going to take the Fluffy Bunny seriously, and everyone has, uh, I don't know, a, a uh, what would it be like, a, a rival, a uh, decimator, a um, uh, something, uh, insert Imperial Star Destroyer ship sounding name here. Everyone has pretty much one of those. So my recommendation for names is to come up with some naming scheme that is specific enough to a uh, class of ship that once you see that naming scheme, you can tell what class of ship it is, but also broad enough that you can apply it to a lot of different classes of ships. So, the naming scheme I came up with is Greek. So, <laughs> um, now that's not to say that every single one of the names is going to be in Greek, but... The, but Verno is actually a mountain in Greece. I decided to name all my miners after mountains in Greece, and so far that's come up with some really, really cool names, like the Oeta class miner, I had an Ada class miner at one point. So naming uh, at least the miners, possibly the utility ships, after mountains in Greece is attached to the primary theme of Greece, and also specific enough that you can kind of tell what kind of thing it is just by looking at the name. Uh, real life examples of this. The United States Navy names its aircraft carriers after, I believe, presidents. It names its battleships or named its battleships after states. Uh, I don't know any of any others off the top of my head, but those kind of come to mind. So, now that we have named this thing, we can actually head into our beacon and change the HUD text to Verno. Class Miner. And if we grab our antenna, we can also change the HUD text there. By the way, when you have an antenna, please change the broadcast radius all the way up to the maximum of 50,000 meters, unless you really are hurting for power. Uh, that way you can actually see it. It's a, I don't know if it's actually wider or longer than the beacon. No, although that should be turned up anyway. Okay, so they're actually the same. Um, but the reason you want to turn the broadcast radius up to maximum is because you do not want to lose control of your miner. So let's go ahead and change the HUD text on here to Verno class miner. Uh, just a few last minute details before I take the screenshot and the blueprint and put this on the workshop. But... I think this is about the most complete miner I've ever actually put together. So, final thing. Probably should have come first, but it is going to be what we do now. We need to test this. Uh, basically, I am not going to allow a ship to be put on the workshop under my name unless I've certified that it can actually do what I claim it can do. And what I claim this can do, um, sort of implicitly by giving it three cargo containers, is saying that it can lift three cargo containers worth of stone. So, oh, and the drills as well. So let's go ahead and hop in here, pull up our inventory, show them all. And I'm going to just drop all of the stone into all of these 
uh, containers, fill them up, and see if we're still flying. Uh, let's go ahead and fly over here a bit. I believe it's Shift F10? Yeah, Shift F10. And let's spawn in some more stone. Amount. 100,000 ought to be enough. Make sure we're very clear. And boom. Yoink. Alright. Fly back to our ship. Hop in. Pull up the inventory again. And keep on filling. Boop. Boop. By the way, I'm checking our lift thrust down there. We're still at 62.56%. Boop. Boop. We're now at 80%. Woohoo! We are 88.81% completely filled up with stone. So, I can actually certify 100% that this ship will hold a full cargo load, including drills, of stone. <laughs> and that means that I am actually comfortable putting this under my name. Um, that, that's that's a very personal thing. Uh, by the way, if we hop into third person for a little flying around, you can see it is very slow, but it is in fact holding it, even at this altitude. Um, it, it's kind of a personal thing. I don't want to put something on the workshop that can't hold its entire cargo capacity. Um, the reason for that being, I don't know who's going to pick up my ship next. I don't know who's going to use it and fill it up and crash it because they filled it up past the capacity I say it has and say, hey, hang on, your ship that you spent all this time teaching us how to make doesn't actually pull its own weight. Nope. This thing is pulling its own weight. It is not only pulling its own weight, but it is pulling its own weight very high into the atmosphere. We are at... 1300 meters still climbing uh, we are going to take the screenshot at the max altitude by the way um, so yeah this ship is doing exactly what I say it will we are holding 3.11 tons if I hit V to exit that scroll over yeah 3.11 tons of stone. That's actually a sizable amount of stone. Um, maybe not compared to some larger miners, but it's a sizable amount for an early for early game, which is where this ship is designed to be. We are still climbing. Yikes! This is going to take a little while. So I think I might as well start. Uh, <laughs> Thanking a couple people, uh, thanking a couple of people to help, to uh, help me out. Oh, we have reached our maximum altitude. Whew. Okay, so, let me explain what just happened. Uh, we just went up past our maximum altitude. And we're still going down. I need to get away from everything. Uh, so we just went past our maximum altitude and our thrusters lost uh, power. Because they're atmospheric thrusters, they need air. The higher up you go, the less air there is. Oh boy. Please don't crash. Please don't crash. Please don't crash. Twice in a row. Come on. Please don't do this to me. Okay. Uh, woo. I think we are stable. Again, can we start rising again? Very, very slowly. Okay. So, I'm going to try to get this up to 1500 meters so that I can certify it for. 3.11 tons of stone 
at 1500 meters. Which is a sizable amount of stone to be carrying at this altitude. Yes. We're at 1510 meters. It is carrying its full weight in stone. We are not descending. We are not using up too much power to maintain this lift. So yeah. Certified. Video evidence. This thing works. Alright. So let's go ahead. I think I can tilt it sideways a little bit. Aha! So I almost forgot something. Uh, we actually need to grab our screenshot. So let's go into our inventory and toss out the stone. Or actually take it back into our personal inventory for another weight test later. Um, because it's time to take a blueprint and put that blueprint on the workshop. So, I'm actually I'm actually going to take a page from uh, take a page from Splitsy on this one and head over to Spectator mode, which I believe is yeah. Whoa, whoa. Okay, this is trippy. Okay, I'm I have never I'm not particularly good with uh, Spectator mode. I haven't used it much. Okay, there we go. So it is F8 to go into Spectator mode. But you can see that we are actually on the outside looking in. Um, we're not controlling the ship right now. We're just uh, sort of flying on the outside. So to get back in our character, I think I hit F6. And I'm going to kind of guesstimate about where this is going to be. Let's get a nice shot. Showing off the scripts going on, the lights, the landing gear. Uh, actually, let's deploy the landing gear. And. Whoop, go back into spectator mode. Get a shot at a different angle. Turn off our HUD. Shows off most of the systems quite nicely. And control B to grab a blueprint. We're going to call this, if we can rename it, the Verno Class Liner. Okay. So now we have, scroll down here the Verno class miner. And if we start up a new game, we can actually um, build this in here uh, just by using the blueprint and a projector, but I'm not going to be doing that at the moment because I uh, haven't played around with 3D printers yet. <laughs> so, let's... Okay, so we can take more screenshots. Oh, never mind, that's for that. Okay. So now let's go over here and hit Publish. Hit yes, we're going to select the type. This is a ship. Hit OK. And this can take a little bit. Might take a little bit longer. Oh, no. Okay, so let's open up the Steam overlay to edit everything else. Uh, I think that is going to do it for the video. So now I need a, uh, whoop. Oop, don't need that. I need to hop back into my character and get a screenshot for the episode. And I'm going to do it in front of something that I think is actually going to be a, uh, spoiler alert. 
for not what I'm doing next, but what I'm doing soon. Uh, this popped up a few episodes ago, so uh, c consider it, uh, consider the first appearance of this the early warning device, or the early warning of it. We're all ready, ready to land. Yep, we're ready to land. Go ahead and float on over here. And land in front of this thing. So, with that, grabbing our screenshot, thank you guys for watching. If you like the video and the series and you want to see more chill gaming content like it, you can hit those subscribe and notification buttons down below. Also, if you want to support the channel, be sure to leave a like. It really, really helps me out. Again, thank you guys for watching. And I will see y'all in the next series!